If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before moving on. We're going to begin by drawing a negative and a positive charge that are separated from each other by 50 centimeters. We can call the negative charge Q1 and the positive charge Q2. Notice that because the charges are opposite in sign, that the two charges would be attracted to each other. Let's call the force that's acting on charge 2 F sub A. We'll use a subscript of A just to keep track of this particular force. According to Coulomb's law, the force acting on charge Q2 would equal the following. We have the Coulomb constant K multiplied by the charges and then divided by the distance between the charges squared. Now remember that F sub A was the force acting on charge 2. Ask yourself which direction would that force be pointing? Would it be to the right or would it be to the left? And because it was an attractive force, it would be pointing to the left towards that negative charge. Because F A would be pointing to the left, we need to put a negative sign in front of it. Now the charges are connected together by a wire as stated in the question. And a key concept is that when they're connected by this wire, they will acquire the same charge. How do I know that? Well, because they are identical conducting spheres. So when you connect them with a the wire, the charge will redistribute itself so that the charge on Q2 would be the same as the charge on Q1. Now, what will that charge be in symbolic form? Well, it's simply going to be the charge on sphere 1 plus the charge on sphere 2 divided by 2. In other words, it's just the average of the charges. So after we connect them with a the wire, we know that the charge on this sphere has this value and the charge on this sphere also has that same value. So we're going to develop a second force equation. We'll call it F sub B. Once again, it's going to be the force acting on charge Q2. Notice that the question states in this situation that the spheres are repelling each other. So now this force, this F sub B, that's acting on charge Q2 is pointing in the opposite direction. In other words, FB is pointing to the right. So that means that it will have a positive value. So we're gonna keep this positive. We can simplify this a little bit by multiplying the twos and moving them down to the denominator and then rewriting Q1 plus Q2 times Q1 plus Q2 as just Q1 plus Q2 squared. Now we've cleaned up the workspace a bit. We're going to take the FA equation and try to isolate the product Q1 times Q2. So to do that, we would first multiply both sides of the equation by R squared. And then, of course, divide both sides of the equation by negative K so that it cancels out on the right side. Now, remember that FA was that original attractive force, which had a value of 0.108 newtons. We know R is 0.5 meters. Notice we have to convert the 50 centimeters to 0.5 meters. And then K is a known value as well. So we're going to plug in and solve for the product of Q1 and Q2. And after plugging in and crunching it down, you should get negative 3 times 10 to the negative 12 for the product of Q1 and Q2. And that's a result that we're going to hold on to and use a little bit later on in the problem. So we'll move over to the FB equation. And in this case, we're going to solve for Q1 plus Q2. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by 4R squared, and then we'll divide by K. And then we'll actually have to take the square root of both sides to finish that off. I suppose if you want to get really fancy, we can take the square root of 4 to become 2 and pull that out of the square root. And then pull the square root of r squared outside as an r. Remember that Fb was that second force. It was that repulsive force. And that was stated in the question as having this value here. So here are all the known values plugged in. When you crunch this one down, you should get 2 times 10 to the minus 6th as the sum of charges 1 and 2. And that's a result we want to hold on to for sure as well. OK, so now we've got ourselves an algebra problem, essentially. We have two equations with two unknowns. Perhaps one way of proceeding would be to go to the first equation and divide both sides of it by Q1 so that we can isolate the Q2. We can now take that result for Q2 and use the substitution method, whereby we plug it in to the other equation for Q2. Notice that this plus and this minus can combine to just form a minus. We can multiply each term on both sides of the equation by Q1 so that it cancels in the denominator. And then this will become Q1 squared. And then over here, we'll just have Q1 times this 2 times 10 to the minus 6. We're going to go ahead and take this term and subtract it over to the other side so that the left side just becomes 0. 
Now we'll notice that we have ourselves a quadratic equation where the variable is q1. In this case, the a will be one and the b will be this term right here and the c will be this term here. So we will have to use the quadratic formula to solve for q1. We'll come up here to set up the quadratic formula. If you have any questions about that, please let me know in the comments. And when we solve this for q1 on our calculators, of course, we end up with 3 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs or negative 1 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. We recall from our original setup that we let q1 equal a negative charge. So we can keep this value for q1 and reject the other one. And then to solve for q2, we can refer back to this equation, whereby we can plug in our value of q1. And when we do that, we see that q2 turns out to be positive 3 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Notice that positive result is consistent with our original designation of letting q2 equal a positive charge. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.